Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I'd ask uh, unanimous consent to read from a document from a document from time to time? Without objection. Yeah. Uh, lady from the 7th, I'm sorry if people weren't listening to everything that you had to say about your letter to the Pope. You know, the problem is you didn't go high enough. To get their attention, you have to go to Grover Norquist. <laughs> you know, I would thank the other side of the aisle for this bill if it wasn't such a bad bill. Uh, because this bill illustrates everything that I've learned in about 14 years being here. What's wrong with legislative lobbying uh, specifically a group called ALEC, the American Legislative Exchange Council. Uh, now, I've explained this before, but I think it's always worth mentioning again. Uh, ALEC is a corporate dating service for lonely legislators and corporate special interests that eventually the relationship culminates with uh, some special interest legislation, and hopefully uh, that lives happily uh, ever after is the ALEC model. Uh, unfortunately, what's excluded from that equation is the public, Mr. Speaker, and I think today this bill is a, a prime example of that. When I was at the ALEC convention this summer, uh, one of the prime uh, sets of classes they had were about how to uh, eliminate public education. It's really about how to privatize it. They talked about how to do it, specific bills, strategy, and gave some of the best advice in the country that you can afford on how to do that. And the reason ALEC has got so much attention recently is that in the 2010 elections, uh, let's face it, what happened across the country, a lot of Democrats lost. I think it was over 650 Democrats. And that put Republicans in control of the highest amount of state legislatures since 1928. Now, I guarantee that's going to change this year. But what happened is too many states, like Wisconsin, overreached and put out bills like this, bills that are nothing but a special interest corporate giveaway. And that's exactly what this is. I think I brought up, when we were on the floor last time talking about amendments, uh, a memo, an email that was acquired by one Wisconsin now through an open records request from the Government Affairs Associate at American Federation for Children uh, that specifically gave advice to the author of how to draft this legislation. And I think what's particularly interesting, I would ask the lady from the 56th the question, but I think it would be more relevant if I could direct that towards the uh, gentleman from Waukesha, Scott Jensen, uh, who is here today, because I think that's where the bill got drafted. And the reason I say that is directly in the email that came through the open records request was model legislation on how to do a special needs scholarship program act. And what's interesting, Mr. Speaker, about this model legislation, as I went through it to look up the various sections, you know what? From the ALEC model legislation to the legislation offered by the lobbyist for the special interest that wants corp taxpayer funded corporate vouchers, taxpayer funded vouchers, it's word for word. Section 1 is about a title. Section 2 is about definitions. Section 3 is about basic elements of the special needs scholarship program. Section 4, responsibilities of resident school districts. And on and on and on. This is word for word from ALEC model legislation. Now granted, a couple things are tweaked as you get to matching up to our statutes. But the actual legislation is directly from ALEC. We don't get this lucky usually in most states where you get something so direct, like an open records request, Mr. Speaker, where you can tie it like this. Now, a few interesting things about this as you read through it, there's some specific notes they give. You know, one, I don't know if you know it, Mr. Speaker, but the, on, uh, the corporate chair for ALEC in 2011 was uh, a CEO for an online for-profit school company. So uh, it's interesting when you look at this legislation and where some of this comes from. Specifically, what they have in here, uh, let me just take one section, section 8. The language very specifically says, and this is quote, may contract with one or more qualified researchers who have previous experience evaluating school choice programs to conduct a study of the program with funds other than state funds. So this is trying to make sure it's a good program. What that says in English not ALEC-ish, is you are going to outsource the evaluation to people who are, eval who are effectively in the business of evaluating school vouchers. So you're going to go to corporations that get paid to evaluate these programs to evaluate the program, which is a pretty risky proposition because the only reason they're even in business is because they evaluate these programs for a living. 
Now, I want to give the lady from the 56th some credit because one of their marketing tips she did not do. And it's rare when ALEC legislation isn't followed uh, hook, line, and sinker. Uh, one of their marketing tips in this email acquired said, please note, most states that have passed a special needs scholarship program have chosen to name the program after a child with special needs or an advocate for such children. Well, isn't that special? No, you didn't do that, Mr. Speaker. Your side of the aisle didn't do it. I'm going to give you credit for that. But isn't it nice? They give you a nice little warm and fuzzy. As you're handing over taxpayer dollars to a corporation, you do it with a smile. You put a little kid's face on it. Aww, Mr. Speaker, why didn't you do it? You know, how much, you know how much warmer and fuzzier this would have been if you just did that? But, but you didn't do that. So I give you credit. There is a difference that I can find from the ALEC model legislation to what we have in front of us. So the problem is, this isn't about education, and I think plenty of people have addressed that today. This isn't about helping kids with special needs because all the groups that help kids with special needs are advocating against this bill. Oh, the grand poobah of Wisconsin ALEC has popped out. It must be February 2nd. Hello, Mr. Alec Grand Poobah. He, he's not hearing it, Mr. Speaker. I, I, will, I will go directly through you, my comments. I just, it's so rare that that door opens up and someone pops out of there that, you know, you got to acknowledge it sometimes, Mr. Speaker. But here's the bottom line. This is not about education. This is not about helping kids with special needs. Uh, this is about privatization. This is about corporate profits, and this is about dismantling public education. It's taxpayer-funded vouchers that are unaccountable and ultimately are a special interest giveaway, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I would hope that we would not vote for this legislation. I expect that you will vote for this legislation, uh, but it is my hope that the Senate will see wiser uh, than to take an ALEC bill with this much of a paper trail because I'll tell you, uh, nationally, uh, there's only a couple states that have been this sloppy. And I would hope that Wisconsin wouldn't be one of them that shows how blindly we follow an uh, institution that's paid for by corporations, for corporations, and uses state legislators to introduce their, their wares. Thank you.